Next question is from Marie in Motion. As someone who is interested in being a personal trainer, what core disciplines should be established in oneself first before they can really train others successfully? Mm, core disciplines that they should have themselves. Well, I think the obvious one is it's probably a good idea to have been pretty consistent with fitness and good nutrition with yourself. Now, this may not be absolutely necessary, but I think it's very hard to train people to teach them and to relate to them if you yourself are not kind of doing it yourself. Now, I don't mean you need to look ripped. That's not what I'm trying mm -hmm. to say. But if you're trying to communicate to someone about consistency and exercise and here's the things you need to do with nutrition, there's a lot of stuff that you can learn in books, but there's sometimes you have to kind of experience it yourself before you can communicate it really effectively to somebody. So I would say, I mean, that, that sounds obvious, but I would say that's probably the most It's important. interesting. This reminds me of a post I just saw from Max Schmarzo. He, he put out there that like Elon Musk uh, basically had built a, a rocket without oh, uh, saw, being, yeah, yeah a, you know, a rocket engineer um, or have never done it before, basically. But I, I, I feel that like, you know, if you're competent and you're, you're really passionate about fitness and you want to, you know, learn, I, it, I, I honestly, I don't see how you can do it without practicing on yourself first and being able to get through all of that uh, to then translate and relay that to somebody else. I just, that would be a really hard thing to overcome, uh, you know, just to be able to have that kind of dialogue with somebody. Well, it's like the exercise piece, right? Like to, to cue somebody, like it's, you don't learn the cues until you've kind of done it yourself and seen enough bodies like that i feel the same thing goes for like nutrition and or being able to build muscle on your body or burn body fat like to your point sal you don't need to be five percent body fat you don't need to be the most ripped guy or girl in the gym but you should have been able to take the science that you've learned from either your certifications or schooling and have applied it to yourself to have shown change, whether that is adding five to 10 pounds of muscle to your frame or reducing 10 to 15 pounds of body fat. Both of those require discipline, consistency, and knowledge with the science to apply to your own body. And you, I think, first need to be able to do that to be able to communicate it effectively to somebody else. True, because you know one of the big uh, you know factors in being a good trainer is uh, being able to relate uh, mm -hmm. to the client and, and to connect to them. Um, and it's hard to relate to someone uh, unless you've kind of experienced some of what they're about to go through or some of the challenges that they may have with you know trying to change the nutrition and exercise. Um, by the way, again, uh, I'll give you an example of what I mean by you don't have to be ripped. I had this one trainer that worked for me once who had lost 50 pounds. Was it was a client, actually. He was a client, not of mine, of, an, of a trainer that worked for me. Lost 50 pounds, kept working out for about a year, and then decided to become a trainer. Now, he was by no means the most fit-looking person in the gym or trainer. Mm -hmm. He looked like an everyday, like a regular guy that, that worked out. Nothing spectacular. But – because he could relate to the people, because he had just gone through the journey himself. He'd lost 50 pounds. He did such a good job communicating to people. He did such a good job with his clients, and his clients absolutely loved yeah, him. because so. he went through it personally. Absolutely. But that's the thing. Like I I think you can understand, uh, like, and you could read books, and you can you know go through the education and everything, but until you actually apply it yourself, like you're not going to be able to have that kind of connection like you could if you you know apply it to yourself. Totally. The other one is a little bit of self-awareness. Um, I think uh, on the other end of the scale, if you're a trainer, you're probably somewhat of a fitness fan fanatic. So there's a little bit of self-awareness that might be necessary to realize that you are a fitness fanatic and the people you're working with <laughs> right, are not. Right. True. You know, so when you're talking to someone about coming to the gym four days a week and they're telling you that's too much time for them and you're thinking like, oh, you just got to make the time. I may, I work out five, seven days a week. And yeah. Like a little bit of self-awareness, like, okay, uh, this person is not fanatical about fitness like I am. So it's going to be different for them. The mm -hmm. other thing is that comes to mind for me too is, and it, I feel like it seems obvious, but I remember having to communicate this to my staff all the time is that when you come across something that you don't know or you don't understand or you've never seen before, or you're challenged by, like, immediately go home and research that. Mm -hmm. And and it's crazy because today, compared to what it was like for me 20 years ago, is totally different. Like to go search, seek out the knowledge and information that I may need to uh, help this client that I'm that I just got that is hitting me with a question. I'm like, oh my God, mm -hmm. I've never heard that before or I've never dealt with that issue. Let me go home and figure it out. Like I think that's just part of it too, is just if you're constantly seeking out new information and knowledge, I think that's a great discipline. You should be, if you love and you're passionate about this, 
then a lot of what you should be reading should be related to the type of people that you're probably going to be helping. Totally.